Vehicles and mods in Project Zomboid go together like peanut butter and jelly on bread. Now if you don't know how to make a good PB&J, let me demonstrate. So first you get your slice of bread and you slap it on a plate. And then you grab your spoon to then use to grab that delicious jelly out. Anyways, now that you have your peanut butter and jelly sandwich, we can continue on talking about the modded vehicles in Project Zomboid. In my last video about vehicles, I showcased the vanilla vehicles and their durability against the horde of zombies to see how strong they are. So in this video, I'll be showcasing and testing the durability of some of the modded vehicles. Now there's an absolute ton of vehicles you can add into your game through modding, but I'll be specifically testing the Phil Buster's Rhyme used cars mod in this video. Plus two extra ones at the end just as a bonus. The mod consists of 54 vehicles but a total of 99 if you include all the different variants of them and yes that is an absolute fuck ton of vehicles to test. I didn't include any helicopters of course but I believe I have all the ground vehicles here but I'm sorry if I missed some. Like before I'll be conducting the test by making a metal crate enclosure, trapping the zombies in it and ramming them at 70 miles an hour to see how far each vehicle can make it and if any can reach the wall. I do the test at 70 miles an hour to somewhat simulate a situation of you going along one of the roads and then having a horde appearing right in front of you. Maybe not very realistic but hey, zomboid world ain't real. If the vehicle has different variants I will be using the strongest variant of said vehicle. Also all the vehicles will be at full health with the engine quality at 100% and the tyre friction on the cars max as it can be. I didn't split the vehicles into any classes as I will be testing them in pretty much any order except leaving the big boy vehicles until last. Not wasting any more time, let's see how the Phil Buster Rhymes vehicles do against the Horde. First up we have the Kichiro Paresa, quite a fast car that can kill you and doesn't really have too much space to carry your loot. Upon impact it bounced off a bit and after starting its push being 4 crates in, it seemed to have gotten to around the 8th crate giving it a score of 4 crates. Second in line from the massive list to come is the Kritchen Kafer. Oh it's Hitler's favourite car. A classic beetle we all know and love, fast, small and carries an engine in its trunk, the beetle didn't struggle much on impact and after starting around 2 crates early, it got to around the 5th crate giving it a score of 7 crates. Thirdly we have the Chevrolet Titan, a simple squared car with decent trunk space and 4 doors for um. Uh, oh friends, yes, friends, friends, yeah, yeah. But upon impact, the Titan bounced off the horde as well, then only managed to push through five crates. Next up is the Franklin Thoroughbred or throughout bread. A classic muscle car that's somewhat fast but very loud due to the muscle that it carries. The bread, like some other vehicles already, bounced off the horde upon impact. Then after starting its run being three crates in, it only got through another five before eventually breaking down. Now we have a little bit of a bigger vehicle, the Franklin Afford the Range. Can you afford the range? <laughs> yeah I'm sorry I'm actually not okay. But the Afford the Range is basically a more squared version of the Franklin Valor line from the vanilla game, it has great trunk capacity, has decent speed and is a very reliable van. Upon impact, I thought I lost the van due to its flipping on its side, but it managed to turtle its way back onto its wheels and managed to get through around 6 crates. On the topic of reliable vehicles, we have the Kichiro Sukom, a very reliable truck that comes in two variants with great trunk space and speed along with it and after doing a wheelie upon impact, the truck still pushed through the horde very well and managed to reach the 8th crate making it first place so far. Back to some muscles, we have the Franklin Boulette, an old schoolish type muscle car which is also somewhat fast and is loud. Upon impact, it performed a wheelie just like the vehicle before, then started its run on the 5th crate and ended it on the 10th making it clear only 5 crates. Now back to a Kichiro family member, we have the Kichiro Estrelas, quite a simple car with 4 doors, decent trunk space and decent speed. It took the impact like an absolute champ, not moving at all, and started pushing through being 4 crates in and ended being on the 10th crate, giving a nice score of 6 crates. Moving on to a off-road vehicle, we have the Lark Rancher, a spacious, fast and off-road vehicle that also comes in 4 different variants. The vehicles performing a wheelie upon impact seems to be becoming a pattern, but the Rancher was definitely winning at it. Unfortunately, after it started on the 4th crate, 
he only got through another four before eventually breaking down. The next vehicle you may recognize as that vehicle from that movie, the Franklin Clark. A very spacious SUV type vehicle with decent speed and space for most of your loot. Upon impact, it bounced off quite a lot, then only managed to push through five crates before eventually roaring no more. If you're looking for some speed, the next car, Ranioki Grand Slam, might be what you need. A very fast muscle car with high potential of killing you, it has a loud engine and barely any storage for your loot. It stood its ground upon impact, then only managed to push through around six crates. Another vehicle on the list which is not only fast but surprisingly very durable, the Lausan 140X. A smallish vehicle which can kill you within seconds due to its insane acceleration. On the first try, I thought something was wrong as not only the vehicle did get quite damaged from the impact but then went on and pushed through around 10 crates. But no, the second try concluded basically the same result, that being that the Lausan just mows down the hordes in front of it with ease and it is in first place clearing 10 crates. Now back to some pickup trucks, we have the Franklin EF35. A classic pickup truck which also has an ambulance variant, has a lot of space for your loot and has somewhat off-road capabilities. The pickup truck, like some of the other vehicles, had to try the wheelie then went on to being very close with the Lausan as it managed to clear 9 crates. Now if you ever need a path cleared, just use the next vehicle, Lark Path Killer. A square SUV type vehicle with a lot of space for those friends and your loot. Unfortunately it hit one zombie before impact but it still went on to do this side trick and then it went on to reach the 6th crate before eventually it couldn't kill paths much longer. The next vehicle was actually my granddad's favourite and the first ever vehicle I drove in real life. The Franklin Mule or better known worldwide as a tractor. It's a pretty self explained vehicle used for farming worldwide. It's one of the slowest vehicles vehicles in Project Zomboid maxing out at only 30 miles an hour. The impact was just as eventful as you would expect, fucking mad explosions and everything. And after starting out on the third crate, it managed to push through another four before eventually breaking down. Moving on from the childhood days, the next vehicle we have is the Lark Canyon Nero, another squared SUV type vehicle with plenty of space for your loot and has decent speed. Upon impact with the horde, it did something that I don't even know what to call. Anyone care to name this move? But after straightening the car and starting on the third crate, he only managed to push through another three before eventually breaking down. Next up, we have another SUV type vehicle but much larger, the Chevalier Kobold. Not to be confused with the German folklore creature, but it's a good off-road vehicle with plenty of space for your loot and has decent speed along with it. It took the impact very well and after starting its run being two crates in, he only managed to get through another four. The next vehicle is one of the earliest cars the Chevalier car company released, that being the Chevalier Ragnora. A decent pickup truck even though it's old, it's quite slow but has decent space for all your loot, it bounced off a little upon impact, then started pushing through the horde being 3 crates in and broke down 5 crates later, showing just because it's old doesn't mean it's the weakest one here. Back to some loud cars, we have the Dash Blitzer and its RP edition. A nice fast muscle car with low storage capacity but very nice looking if you're going with the RP edition. It took the impact fairly well, then started pushing through being on the third crate and ended on the 10th giving it a nice score of 7 crates. Another muscle car on the list, if it can be called one even, is the Ranioki Goat, a squared looking car which doesn't have much space in it but is somewhat fast and after doing a little wheelie upon impact with the zombies, he only managed to push through 3 crates from where it started. Next we have a mix of some recent vehicles, the Chevalier El Chimera, a fast and nice looking muscle pickup truck that also has decent space for all your loot. The first attempt ended in the car flipping on its back whilst the second attempt showed the car only managed to get through two crates. Moving on to yet another muscle car, the Utana Lynx, an oldest style muscle car with decent speed and some decent trunk space. It did a decent wheelie upon impact and managed to get through to around the fifth crate. The first military vehicle on the list we have is the M151A2, a simple military jeep, it's good of road and it's quite speedy. Upon impact it flipped on its side but managed to get back up then started pushing through being on the second crate 
and only managed to get through another four before breaking down. Next up we have another small car, the Schlafsky Nogo. Another speedy car that doesn't exactly hold much of your loot but it's a great vehicle for scouting trips. Like the Jeep right before, it flipped on its side but this time it did not flip back, whilst the second attempt showed the true power of the Schlafsky as it took the impact fairly well and then managed to push through what appeared to be seven crates. Now onto something spicy, we have the Franklin Jalapeno, an oldish looking vehicle with decent space but not much space at all for any of your loot but being lightweight seemed to have helped it as it took the impact very well and started pushing through being 4 crates in but it got all the way to the end of the pit and since its engine was clearly in bad condition but hasn't yet broken I decided to give the Jalapeno an additional crate cleared on top of the 8 it did landing it tied with the Franklin EF35 at 9 crates. Now back to some Chevaliers, we have the Chevalier Saint Alban, a somewhat wannabe muscle car with decent speed but not too much space. It took the impact quite well then started pushing through being 5 crates in and managed to break right before the wall giving it a nice total score of 7 crates. Next up we have the Chevalier Wendigo, another wannabe muscle car that's also a convertible. Has decent speed but not a lot of space in its trunk. The Wendigo took the impact very well then was pushing through the horde just as well as it managed to reach the 10th crate but since right before reaching it the horde in front of it was much smaller I decided to deduct one crate point from its score leaving it at 9 crates in total. Now to show off some muscle we have the Franklin Thunder Cougar, a loud, powerful and fast muscle car with not a lot of space for your loot. It couldn't keep its wheels down upon impact and even though the vehicle may have a cool name it did not manage to get far into the pit only clearing what seemed to be two crates. Next we have a vehicle that I swear some men in black would be driving, the Lomer Hog JD. A car often seen being used to spy on someone with decent speed, space and manufactured probably by aliens themselves. It hit a single zombie before the initial impact yet it still managed to do a little wheelie then it got through to around the fifth crate and I decided to add one on top of that for that zombie that it hit before giving it a score of six crates. We ain't done with the Chevalier vehicles just yet and the Chevalier Carnifex is the next vehicle in line. A great vehicle to carry your whole squad, great for loot runs and actually has the decent speed along with it. It swayed of course a bit upon impact then managed to clear 5 crates before breaking down. Another great Chevalier squad vehicle on the list is the Chevalier Cosmo, a van mainly used to get high in, has a lot of space and decent speed. It hit 2 zombies before the initial impact so I decided to add an extra point on top of the 4 crates it managed to clear and the zombies clearly didn't seem to like that at all. Next on the list we have a very special muscle car, the Pursuit Special, one of the best looking muscle cars fully showing off its powerful engine will kill you with its speed and will not hold much of your loot. Unfortunately the car clearly wasn't special enough as even though it took the impact very well it only managed to push through to around the fourth crate. Another vehicle that we have on the list that is named after an animal is the Dash Buck. A great pickup truck with decent speed and space for your loot. The impact made a starting point for the Buck one crate earlier but it still only then made it through another two before breaking down giving a total score of 3 crates. Now of course some of the vehicles had to have been imported from somewhere else into Kentucky and one of those vehicles that seems to be it for sure is the Bohag 244, another squared looking car with decent speed and space for your loot. The first attempt ended in the car being upside down whilst the second attempt nearly ended exactly the same way but in the end the Bohag only got past around 4 crates. Next up we have a simple yet surprising vehicle, the Crest Andata, a surprisingly fast car with decent space for your loot and those friends. Maybe its speed comes from it being lightweight as on impact it just flew back with ease but it still managed to put up a fight and it got through to around the 7th crate. A special jeep that we have on the list is the Jeep Cherokee Off-Road. Like its name applies it's a great off-road vehicle with decent speed and a lot of space for all your goodies. Upon impact it got knocked back a bit and then only managed to clear 5 crates. Another somewhat medium sized vehicle on the list is the Move yourself box truck. A very slow truck but it makes up for it with its massive trunk. Upon impact it swayed a bit of course but ultimately it got through what seemed to be around 6 crates. Next in line we have another pickup truck, the Chevy C100 off-road. A great off-road vehicle with great speed and a lot of space for your loot. Some knockback was caused upon impact then he only managed to get through to the third crate. Another vehicle which is definitely imported is the Tokai Renaissance. A small vehicle with not much 
much space for any of your loot but can be used as a scouting vehicle. The impact didn't send it too far back and it managed to get through 4 crates before breaking down for good. The next vehicle may seem like it's been on the list already but it's apparently different so here we are, the Franklin Crest Andata. The vehicle comes in many different variants and has a lot of space for either the squad or for the loot. The impact of the horde caused a minor knockback and the Antarda managed to get through to around the 5th crate. One of the last pickup trucks on the list, we have the Chevalier D20. Another vehicle with many different variants, has a lot of space for your loot and somewhat decent speed along with it. And even though it hit a zombie before the initial impact, it didn't really help it much as it only managed to push through 3 crates. Finally moving on to some bigger and more serious vehicles, we have the M1025, also more known as to many as the Humvee. It's an amazing military vehicle with all round reliability, speed and space for a lot of your loot and your friends. Upon impact it got knocked back quite a bit and then the Humvee didn't really show much strength pushing through the horde as it only seemed to get through to the third crate, whilst its brother, the M1060, basically a pickup version of the Humvee with more space for loot but less space for your friends, pretty much had the same result upon impact but it seemed to have gotten two crates further. Next up we have a familiar vehicle, the Chevalier SWAT van, the daddy of the Chevalier step van, has plenty of space for all your friends and for all the loot that Gigamart holds for you. It stood its ground upon impact fairly well but then it didn't seem to put much effort into pushing through the horde as it seemed to have only got through to the second crate. Next up we have our first home on wheels, that being the Franklin Trip. A vehicle designed for those long trips across Kentucky, has a bed, fridge and can be used as a temporary base whilst you're on the move or you can even use it as your permanent base. The Franklin Trip didn't get affected by the impact at all and got through to what seemed to be the 6th crate before becoming just a stationary home. The second home on wheels included in this mod is the Chadwick Mac. It's basically the same as the Franklin Trip except it's bigger and doesn't have any doors on its front. It absorbed the impact fairly well doing a little wheelie whilst at it and seemed to have scored 2 crates less than the Franklin Trip. Many may recognise the next vehicle from the good old days of their childhood, the Franklin BE70 school bus. A slow vehicle that was used to transport school kids but now more often than not is used as a barrier to a base rather than driven. The impact made it perform a wheelie and then it managed to score even less than the Chadwick did, that being around 3 crates. Now I'm sure we have all seen the next vehicle unless you're living under a rock, that being the fire engine. A self-explained vehicle really. Has space for your squad and some of your loot but it doesn't actually have a hose like it should. It managed to fully absorb the impact and after starting on the third crate he only got through another three before breaking down. Another vehicle we should have all seen in our life is the Franklin V250, better known as an ambulance to us all. A fast vehicle mainly used to transport injured people but also has plenty of space for your loot. It took the impact pretty well then it mowed down the horde until it reached the sixth crate. Next up we have two military vehicles, first being the M. 35A2, a great truck with good off-road capabilities and a massive amount of space for all your loot. Its weight proved it on impact as the truck just stood its ground, then managed to get through 5 crates before breaking down. As for its cousin, the M49A2C, a truck that is mainly used to transport gas it seems, like that's it. The cousin seemed to have struggled a bit more upon impact, but pretty much had the same result in how far it's gotten. Next up we have a civilian truck, that being the Franklin EF70. The truck comes in three different variants, that being the box truck, flatbed and a dump truck. All variants are capable of holding a lot of your loot but are all somewhat slow. It didn't struggle much upon impact and managed to get through to around the 5th crate. A somewhat smaller civilian truck that we have on the list is the Pazuzu N5, another slow vehicle that has a lot of space for your loot. Choosing a smaller variant nearly backfired on me as the truck nearly flipped over but managed to stabilise and got through to what seemed to be the 5th crate. And and lastly, the vehicle I believe is to be the last vehicle on the Phil Buster's Ryan vehicles list is the F700 tractor. Another truck mainly used to transport trailers, so without a trailer the truck is pretty much useless. It performed some flipping and bouncing upon impact. Then after starting its push a crate early, it then managed to reach the 4th crate in the enclosure giving it a score of 5 and showing that the big vehicles really do not make a difference. Now moving on to the two 
special vehicles that I wanted to include in this video. First up, we have a good old horse or horses with a carriage, totaling at a whopping 1 horsepower per horse. He has one of the funniest animations I have ever seen in this game, also causing my guy just to stand there. The horses stood their ground upon impact, but only got through 3 crates before eventually getting hungry. The other special vehicle I wanted to test is the ZRAP or the ZRAP, a heavily armoured vehicle with a lot of space for your loot and your squad. Like with the horse, my guy didn't even want to sit down, and upon impact, some other vehicles proved to be better, but the ZRAP did prove itself by pushing through all the way from the beginning and reaching the 10th crate, and there you have it. The best vehicle from the Phil Buster's Rhymes mod proved to be the Lausan 140X, with the ZRAP being just as capable but not part of the same mod. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing as it helps out a lot. It's been ZK Lack. Stay safe out there knowing what vehicle to use to kill the zombies with and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, you put that jelly all over that slice of bread. You get your second slice of bread for that peanut butter. You smother peanut butter all over that bread. You slap them together and boom, there's your sandwich. This is my actual first time ever trying a peanut butter and jelly sandwich so it's my honest opinion. It's alright, it's edible, right, but I think it's just a bit too much, honestly. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, this is like a lot. Even though I didn't really put that much in there, you know, it's like a lot. It's very nice though, I'm not gonna lie, taste wise, it's actually good. I can see why people like this. Maybe if I was like, very hungry. I, I would give it a 7 out of 10.